Eamon Khan here for seconds out with the one and only esteemed trainer Shane McGuigan getting his charge ready. Chris Bill and Smith for Joe Jai this weekend. Uh, first of all, Shane, how are you doing? Good, thank you, mate. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be the last uh, fight camp and you know last uh, last event of the year. So yeah, looking forward to it. Important that Chris Bill and Smith he doesn't experience any slip ups because there's world title shots in the offing next year. Yeah, I mean, like this is always this was always going to be a potential banana skin. Uh, and the thing is, is the, the fights that we're looking at is potentially uh, Jay Optair, who's got a double break in his jaw. He's, gonna, he's not going to be ready till m earliest, I think, April. Mm. Uh, so that realistically won't be till May. And uh, the other option is Gulamarian. Uh, obviously, du Lawrence is a WBO. He's got his uh, mandatory. We're still obviously, yeah, he's still stable, mate. So, um, and then, and then Makabu is just non-existent at the moment, you know, with the WBC. And I think... Uh, weirdly he was always hoping on the Canelo payout um, and he's been extremely hard to negotiate with so it leaves us with two options and that's Jay Altea who's out and then Gulamari is just box Egorov and yeah he's going to have time, time off before getting into a camp so what do we just do we, you know, we do sit and, and just wait around and, 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 and yeah, build up ring rust no it's, it's about keeping busy um, and making sure that you know we're, we're um, we don't you know he keeps keeps developing as a fighter, and that's what we're going to do on Saturday night. Who's the preferred option, Shane? I feel like Optea's our preferred option because you know he's got to be seen as the number one in the division. He's just beat uh, Marius Bradis, who's also the Ring Magazine champion. Um, so, and he's done the most in the cruiserweight division, you know, in terms of from his all of his performances. Um, yeah, he's obviously gave um, Usyk a great fight as well. So, yeah, he was seen as the, Usyk was seen as the number one in the division. The next person that, that took that 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 sort of uh, title was uh, Bradis and and Octavius has beaten him. So, uh, you know, we're after the credibility, and I, I think him being so highly ranked with the IBF, it's it's a great fight. You know, I think Stars make fights. He's a very good boxer. Uh, uh, he, uh, Braders gave, gave him too much space and I think you know obviously for us it's about being tough enough and fit enough to be able to shorten the gap but it's always going to be an extremely hard fight um, for us it's just I think there's a lot more gravity like there's a lot more gravitas coming off the back of the win, winning against uh, Octavia than there is against Gullamarian because he's been very inactive and he's boxed um, he's boxed Edgar off on a like no one, no, no one saw that fight so it's just you know, there's not a lot of Audits that comes off the back of, of that. Shane, turn attentions to Danny Dubois. The WBA have ordered Usyk and Dubois to uh, take on each other for the mandatory uh, defence. Um, what's the situation there, Shane, in your own words? Mm, well, first of all, I don't manage Daniel as Martin Bowers and, and the Peacock uh, management that, that do that. And obviously, uh, Frank Warren is the promoter. So, um, But yeah, I heard that news as well. It's uh, WBA man, uh, have um, ordered it. And I mean, it's it's great. It's, it's what it's what Daniel spent his whole life trying to you know, achieve is becoming a world a world champion and, and be, boxing the best people in the world. And you know, granted, he didn't have the best performances in, the, in that last one, but he got off the deck and he had, a, he had an injury um, and he won in, in spectacular fashion. So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Obviously, I feel like the undisputed fight is is potentially going to be made. Um, but we'll sit and at least we're in a very good position I appreciate United's manager but would you take it would you feel Daniel's ready for, for yeah, that of course, course. you've got to take that you've got to take that you, know, you don't get you, you're not going to get many options to fight the, the number one in the division especially in the, in, with the politics in, in the heavyweight division as well so you get off of that you've got to take it how would Daniel fare against Usyk what, what holes do you see in his game that Daniel could exploit Daniel's an extremely hard puncher and I think you know, we, if we had enough time we'll Come up with the game plan. One of the things I want to get your thoughts on before we let you go, uh, Anti Joshua is over in the States getting the, picking the brains of a number of coaches. What do you think of that uh, position for Anti Joshua? Is that the right stance considering he's maybe train, changing trainer again? Yeah, I mean, I just said it in a previous interview, like it can be seen as two things. It can be seen as, you know, uh, a very good thing because he's going out to experience new coaches and see what's out there. He spent so long with Mokram cracking in the system, as it were, that up at GB. Um, you know, spying the same people, doing the same runs, hit the bag, doing that same pad work. Um, you know, you can become very monotonous, and you can sometimes feel like you're you're stale. Uh, so he's he's gone. He's he's brought in a number of different voices, and I think like it was always a, an issue bringing in Robert Garcia, but not allowing him to be the main voice. Um, I had I don't understand why Angel Fernandez was the main corner man. Um, 
you know, like if you wanted him to be the main corner man, then why bring in Robert, Robert Garcia? Um, so, uh, but you know, Derek James uh, is a is a very good good uh, coach, but he's worked with everyone that he's worked with. He's he's had them since they were literally amateurs, you know, coming through and and. Uh, uh, and Virgil Hunter, the other person he's, he's out trialing as a defensive coach, which I don't think is he's had a number of them. So, you know, you, you need to. He he has to understand that his best attributes are is his attacking um, and his power. You know, and, and he has to brush up and you know, getting good on the inside, um, feeling safe. You know, short to mid range. You know, making sure that you you can rely on your hand defenses, tighten up your guard, and obviously it's not about mauling people, but it's about using your feet, but also spending more time in that middle distance, and uh, because that's a, that allows them to get shots off. And, you know, that's does it take another coach or does it take a mindset thing? It's like you know, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a mindset thing. You know, he needs to he has to have guys that. You know that that he holds respect for, and then he'll get the best out of himself. You know, uh, and I just, I think Virgil Hunter's all wrong for him. Like that's just my my belief. Um, it's far too defensive, um, and there's not enough physical pad work and, and stuff. It's all very like within yourself. It's all technique based. That's not that's he has to exhaust himself, um, train at such a level of intensity, and 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 and, and you know when you're in close take sides do all the things that you know that that a pressure fighter does but to do it but do it well um, and that's why you know like Robert Garcia I, I felt like Robert Garcia would have been a good fit but obviously he's not doing much pads anymore um, and you know you, you, you do I, you learn from sparring and you learn from pad work and if you're not doing the pads you're not able to implement the things that you really want you've got someone else doing the pads um, so yeah it's just you know, it's a decision that he, that, that he has to make, uh, but you know he has to he has to make it quick because he's getting on a bit. How, how do you coach that mindset, uh, Shane? You, you you believe if you're a coach, you believe in yourself, and then if they question it, you shut it down. Yeah, you you listen to it, but you shut it down. You override the decisions. You know, it's been plenty of times that I've had people. You know, like Josh, like Josh Taylor, for instance. Oh, I want to fight um, Regis Progre on the outside. I said, no, you need to fight him in close. Like you fight this guy short. Like you stand out on the outside. You, I've watched you spy. You're not, you're not getting success there. You, you, you're a combination point. You're, you're an in fight, uh, in close attacking fighter that fights the best when you're short. So, so get in there and get your work done. You know, and, and shorten range on him. And he likes to slow the pace down. So you have to make sure when you transition from long to short. That you, you know, you're not getting there with a shot, but then once you're in there, you're getting your work done, and you know that that is just uh, not up for debate. You know, it's like if someone wants to box their own way, or then that's not that's not the right thing. That, that it's not the right approach. As a coach, you need to be able to have full confidence in yourself and your own decision making. And I think like there's so many coaches and opinions, and you know, um, that's 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 I think that's where the issue is. Coming back to Daniel quickly, um, is it a concern from the outside looking in? Is it a concern that he's taken the knee a number of times? Um, does that instill confidence in you as a coach that your fighter is doing doing that in it's, in those tough it's, moments? It's not a concern. It's the right thing to do. I mean, he took a knee and he, he you know he got a feeling back in his leg um, and he got he got the understanding of how much he could push off here and he su survived the first round. He got the confidence in his leg in the second round, knocked him out in the third round. It's like it's very happy. Final, final thing, Shane. We're hopefully going to be getting Fury versus Usyk uh, next year. Um, who would you pick right now if I was to ask your prediction? Fury on points. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to stop Usyk. I think Usyk's had like 400 amateur fights. Uh, I don't think he's been stopped. <laughs> you know, he's got an unbelievable ability to to you know, to win rounds and and un like unreal fitness. I think he was doing like four minute rounds of 30 seconds rest, either 15 of them for that that Joshua uh, is one of his last sparring sessions so he's got great fitness I, I think you know Fury will probably lose quite a few rounds early on and then he'll, he'll just like he did against the smaller guys that he's boxed before he'll, he'll use his size or lean on him or tire him out and I think he'll then win and nick enough rounds down the stretch and I think it'll be quite a relatively close fight but I think Fury on points Is it as simple as that? Is Usyk's skill maybe so great that he could maybe out manoeuvre that size? 
yeah, but I just don't think he can land anything with with proper purchase because you know Fury doesn't bring his head in on the jab, he doesn't bring his head in on the right hand, he stays back all the time, and he's got massive arms, massive shoulders, can take a great body shot. So the things that you would want to do, break him down, he, t- he takes them well, you know. Um, and you know, I think with with Usyk, like, yeah, he can he, he can look to outland him and outwork him. But that size will be a factor, I believe, down the stretch. So, um, yeah, and, and, to, and to negate skill, sometimes you've got to use physicality. And I think that's what Tyson Fury will do. Shane, pleasure speaking. Uh, thank you for speaking to Seconds Out. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you.